So the sun starts helium burning. As it starts the helium burning process, it settles down, becomes a horizontal branch star. It's not really stable at this point. It's still evolving. It's still moving across the HR diagram back towards the main sequence. And so it's still heading back towards the main sequence. Uh, but the thing is, we also know the lifetime of a star on the main sequence depends on the mass of the star. So we'd already given this equation earlier saying that the main sequence lifetime can be approximated by that equation, at least for stars that are within a reasonable range. For super high mass stars, this equation doesn't work. And for really low mass stars, this equation doesn't work. But for in between, this equation works pretty good. And so it's a pretty good approximation. So we can look at a star cluster. And this is the HR diagram of a very old star cluster. And remember, the main sequence would look something kind of like that. Okay, so what's happened is that the stars that were way up here on the main sequence, these are the higher mass stars. Those stars have already died, become red giants, got back onto the horizontal branch. And so that's, that is what's happened here. Okay, now, so we've, we've, we've got the main sequence running across here, and so... Uh, what we can do is we can actually figure out, you know, that the stars that were up here, you know, in the upper part here, they've already died. And so those stars are no longer alive. 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 These stars down here are still alive. So what we can do is work our way up. Those are alive. These are just now dying. So... Those stars are just now dying. So um, in astronomy, we call the spot right there on the HR diagram where the stars are just turning off the main sequence, the turnoff point. So you could actually figure out the age of that star cluster by finding the turnoff point. So for this particular star cluster, then you would find the the uh, you would find the temperature of of those stars that would give you the uh, spectral type of those stars that would let you figure out the mass of those stars and so from the equation you can figure out how old those stars that are just now dying might be and so if you know how old these stars are that are just now dying then that would tell you the age of the star cluster because all stars that are that have lifetimes less than that have died stars that have lifetimes older than that are still alive these stars at the upper end of the hr diagram those stars don't live as long so they've all died these stars at the lower end of the hr diagram those stars live longer and they're still alive. So the stars right here at the, at the turnoff point, they're the ones that are just now dying. So those stars tell you the age of the star cluster. So in other words, if a star that lives for 5 billion years is dying, all stars that live less than 5 billion years are dead. All stars that live more than 5 billion years are still alive in main sequence stars. That means that star cluster is 5 billion years old. On the other hand, if your star cluster has all stars that are old, that live longer than 1.5 billion years, if those stars are still in the main sequence, but stars that live less than 1.5 billion years are off the main sequence, that means your star cluster is 1.5 billion years old. And so th this, this would be how you would be able to judge the age of a star cluster. Uh, so it's by looking at the turnoff point of the HR diagram for that star cluster. So what you would do is you'd measure the uh, stars. Every star you can find in the star cluster, plot them on the HR diagram. Now, one big question there are a few stars that don't behave right. They are too blue to be on the HR diagram. Rather, 
in other words, they should have evolved off the HR diagram. They're too massive. We call those blue stragglers. The question, what can you think of that would make a blue straggler? Okay. Well, it has to be something that affects them. So we'll talk about this a little bit later. But um, something has to affect that star to extend its life somehow. How do you extend the life of a star? You might, uh, uh, well, there are a variety of things you can do. You could extend the life of the star, or you could take a young star and move it up there. Uh, so that, that's, that's the other option, is you could take a star that's, that should have been down here and move it up there. Well, how would you move a star up there? Well, you have to add more mass to it. How would you add mass to a star? Well, remember, about half of all stars are binary stars. So if a, if a star is starting to expand a little bit and die, if it's really close to another star, it could actually dump some of its outer layers onto the other star and add mass to the other star, which would move the other star in, on the HR diagram. And so uh, it's believed that a lot of these blue stragglers are the result of interference between stars in binary pairs. So several different star clusters, the turnoff point, you figure out the how long a star would live that's at that star turnoff point. Okay, so you look at the Pleiades. On the Pleiades, then what you have is you've got a star cluster up here that the turnoff point is way up here. So the, the, the main sequence here, only a handful of stars have come off of the main sequence. And so that means this is a very young star cluster. Okay, now it's old enough that the cool stars have had time to form. Remember, they take a long time to form, so they've actually formed and actually fallen onto the main sequence. Uh, there are some star clusters that are even, even, even younger there in which the stars are still in the process of forming. So uh, the Pleiades here, uh, we have some other star clusters, H and Chi Persei, NGC 2362. The, the stars are pretty much main sequence all the way up the, the, the HR uh, diagram, all the way up the main sequence. Some, stars, some star clusters like M67 have a turnoff point that's really far down here, so that suggests that those star clusters are much older. Uh, Precipi or the Hyades, they have, an, a, they have a, main, a turnoff point between that of the main sequence and, and M67, so they're like in between an age. Okay. Uh, as I said, here's another star cluster right here. Uh, this is an even younger star cluster than the Pleiades. This is the star cluster NGC 2264, uh, and these stars up here have not yet left the main sequence, so it's a very young star cluster. And then these stars are still in the process of forming and getting onto the main sequence at the lower end. And so, again, the HR diagram tells you a whole bunch. In fact, these stars up here are still in the process of, of collapsing down to the, the uh, main sequence. So, so they're, they're, not, they're not actually stars that evolved off yet. So the HR diagram is vital for learning how to find the age of a star cluster.